We've done ElasticNet once with sklearn. Let's try exactly the same, but this time with H2O. Over here, we are importing the generalized linear estimator from H2O, which allows us to set lambda and alpha so we can do ElasticNet. We're also importing grid search. I'm not actually going to use it here. We're going to write the grid search ourselves. The code that follows, I'm just going to click through it. You should have written all of this yourself for the week three assessment, which reminds me, I probably shouldn't release this code until Wednesday morning, I guess. By this stage, we have prepared a data set. Dear fall, it has these linear splines for the numeric variables. Here we go. Elastic net regression. Okay, we've done all this before. We tell H2O to start the Java virtual machine on the local host. The local host is, of course, our container. Previously, I've had HTTPS equals false. I'm going to try doing without that. That seemed to work fine. Now we're going to load the data. You've seen how to do this. We did it loads of times previously. The data we're going to load is DF all, but I'm only going to load the independent variables that I intend to use, plus the one dependent variable, which is sale price, plus the fold variable. I'm going to give the destination frame a name, DF all. That's done. As we discussed previously, H2O DF all is our handle. We can send a message to our virtual machine asking it to look at the five first rows of the data there, and it will return the five first rows to us here in our Python session. Ah, as I think I mentioned above, we don't need to one-hot the categorical variables. H2O is going to do that for us. But over here, we do have the linear splines, one of the D types or the data types. What I was looking for was just to make sure that categorical variables have been read in correctly as the enumerated data type. And you can see every single one of these categorical variables has indeed been read in that way. So that's good. Create Boolean masks to index the DFL data frame. So we're going to create these true false indices. Is it necessary for them to be an H2A data frame as done below? Well, we are going to use these to index into a um, H2O frame. I actually can't remember. I've probably tried at one stage trying to index into an H2O frame using a NumPy array or something like that. I'm presuming, I'm guessing that it didn't work, which is why I've written these as frames. Let's just check this actually works. So our data looks like that. Train index, first little bit of it, should be picking up records 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4 should be lot shapes. Regular, regular, and IR1. Let's have a look at this index. You can see 1, 3, and 4 are there. Can we index our data frame as simply as that? Let's give it a go. We did. Now, that should be first example it picks up. Regular level inside, it looks good. And it should also have picked up this one. Regular level corner. And it should have picked this one up. Regular level inside. So it does seem to be working. That's interesting. In pandas, I don't think this would work. You'll probably have to give it some kind of location, such as location 1, 3, and 4. But it seems that this works. It's kind of not surprising, since I probably tested it when I wrote it. Now, we need to create a grid. How can we create a grid? It needs to be all combinations of lambdas and alphas that we choose. So here's an example. We can use NumPy mesh grid to create all possible combinations of A, B, X, Y, Z. If we didn't reshape it, by the way, what you actually get is two separate arrays. First array has repeats of all the A's and the B's, and the second ones of all the X, Y, and Z, and you kind of have to put them on top of each other. So you would have AX, AY, AZ, BX, BY, BZ. If you imagine these on top of each other, the B shape unpacks all those A and B's down the first dimension, and then it unpacks all the X and Y's down the second dimension, and you get nicely what we need. Here's a list comprehension to give us a list of lambdas, which we're going to be using. Now, I did a lot of experimentation before I got to these, it makes much more sense for the lambda part of the search to allow H2O to choose the lambdas itself, because it is intelligent like that. It can work out the place for lambda to start, which will be where lambda is just big enough that you get an intercept-only model, and it can reduce lambda from there. But here we're creating all our lambda options. Over here, we're just going to use values of alpha 0, 0.5, and 0.99. Typically, I might have 0.25 and 0.75 in there as well. But this is just really to save time. The number of models we're going to build is the number of combinations 
which is something like 15 times 3, we're going to build 45 models. Here are the parameters. You can see we start off with all of the lambdas, and for those we set alpha equal to 0, and then further on down the parameters, if we did, say, 20 to 25, you'd see we're busy going through where alpha equals 0 0.5, and so on. We'll turn these parameters into a data frame, and we'll add some columns where we're going to store our performance metrics. So finally, we have our grid, although it's not really a grid, it's a data frame, and that is ready to be filled in. And that was your job. I don't know if you gave it a go, but let's do it together now. We will iterate with a for loop through the whole grid. We've actually got a progress bar going here, so hopefully that's going to give us some idea of how far we are through our models. But in addition, we're going to print out every 10 models where we're up to. Alpha and lambda should be set to the values from the grid as above. Well, that's not hard. Moving on, family should be Gaussian, and link should be identity. We're going to train the model, and we're going to use for the training frame the rows indexed by this Boolean index predictions. Hopefully, something like model dot predict on the train, and the same for val. Okay, and the predictions, we've got them here. For train, and for val. That should be it, we instantiate our model, we train, and we predict, exactly what we always do. Well, that didn't work. I was expecting the lambda underscore, because lambda is a reserved keyword, and there we go. I'm just going to pause while that fits.